It's My Turn is an interactive training program that demonstrates positive results in transition planning for students with disabilities. We are pleased that you would like to know more about this completely student-focused experience. Kelly Van Order, a high school intervention specialist, shares her perspectives on this extraordinary training. It's My Turn um, uses a lot of wow techniques, I'll call them, you know, to get the kids involved in interacting. Uh, they use a lot of excitement. Um, they use a lot of um, kids-friendly music <laughs> for the teenagers. For me, the best thing about It's My Turn, uh, I've worked with students with special needs for many years, but this is the first year I've worked with students in the high school age, and it's the first year I have a whole classroom of students that are somewhere on the transition continuum. And so it was great for me to see. <laughs> I knew everything that was out there, but it was great for me to see, you know, to, to see where the kids are going to be going and to see that the kids can understand that and it's not over their heads. I also think it was really neat. Um, we had one of our students who was very shy and, and doesn't like new people, doesn't like to talk to new people and he volunteered twice today on the second day. And so that was really exciting and he actually wore one of the costumes and, and so I, w I was very excited that, that uh, the, a program that has brand new faces to him and he was able to open up and, and have fun and participate. So I was excited and he also got to win one of the great prizes too, so <laughs> that was fun. Um, I think the, uh, the kids seeing the their, their teachers, the kids seeing their teachers uh, dress up and act up. They see me do that quite a bit, but they don't get to see a lot of the, ki uh, a lot of the other teachers uh, act up. And so it was a lot of fun to, to see them dress up and do little skits. And uh, they got to laugh and have fun with the teachers. And that's, that's a neat thing to see, the interaction between the teachers. It's My Turn is successful because it focuses on the students. Through the use of multiple teaching techniques and accommodations, all students have the opportunity to participate and benefit from the training. The emphasis is on having fun, but there's a purpose for every activity. Your school staff members are integral to the training. Activities establish a camaraderie between each student and the school staff. The card boxes that the students take with them help encourage continuing collaboration among school staff to support each student as he or she prepares to transition out of school. On the first day of the training, upbeat music welcomes the students as they enter the room. Students are greeted warmly and directed to a table where each finds a name tag, a card box, markers, and supplies. The students write their name on the name tag and use stickers to decorate the card box to represent their interests in preparation for introducing themselves. It's my turn staff members, parent mentors, and their teachers mingle with the students to encourage them so they feel more comfortable about being at the training and about the prospect of introducing themselves. Some of the students seem a little reluctant at first, but keep your eye on them to see how they warm up and really get into the activities as they feel more comfortable. The It's My Turn trainers introduce themselves in a fun way and then encourage the students to introduce themselves and tell the others something about them. This dog named Chubbs. Chubbs? Pookie. A girl. Pookie. Okay. It's My Turn trainers support the comfort of students by asking questions and reacting positively. Is Melissa your friend? Yeah. Oh, and you'd like to introduce her? That is very nice of you. Thank you very much. All right. The idea of transition is the first thing that is explained. Are you all going to be at school for the rest of your life? No. No, no way! Are you kidding? We're going to kiss school goodbye. You're going to kiss the school? Joel's going to kiss the school goodbye. And Joel's going to go into? Go ahead. Life. Yes. One of the students holds a sign that says school. All the students understand that concept. When asked if they're always going to be in school, the students all respond with a big no. A second student holds a sign that says life. Life is explained as everything that happens beyond school. 
A third student who is dressed in a cap and gown and holds a sign that says transition moves from school to life. The next two days will help the students prepare for their own transition from school to life. Let's see these, oh my gosh, the muscles! Woo! To increase each student's awareness of what is required when they think about career choices, music plays and Superman, a school staff member, enters. Another staff member portraying Superman's counterpart, Clark Kent, follows. Students compare and contrast the practical aspects of the jobs held by Superman and Clark Kent. Discussion centers on a variety of topics, such as whether a person is their own boss or works for someone else. What skills are needed for each job? The dress code required? The time work? Nine to five versus always being on call? Or benefits? What do you work with, Clark? Do you work with adults? Yes, I do. I work with adults. Like older people? People about my age, anywhere from right out of college all the way up to close to retiring. All I like her job. And then I uh, like his job, but I wish he got money and she didn't get that much money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like Superman's because he got his powers and he can fly. There is no right answer or wrong answer. It's what's right for you. What works for you? What do you like? Okay. That's what's important. Okay. Thank you, Superman and Clark Kent, for your help. Let's see you fly, Superman! After Superman and Clark Kent depart, the students open up the employment card boxes that they decorated. Students have post-it notes on which they mark a plus sign for yes, a minus sign for no, and a question mark for not sure to attach to each of the employment cards. Students then go through the cards to help them determine their preferences for future employment. It's My Turn trainers and school staff members support the students by asking questions as they work through this activity. This activity simulates each student's exploration of his or her individual desires and abilities. Students are more successful and happy with their jobs when there's a close match with what they like to do and what the job entails. When students have completed their cards, they're encouraged to dress up in one of the many work costumes that are provided that best fits in with what they would like to do. Students really enjoy the opportunity to make a costume selection. Would they have to like to travel? A student volunteers to describe yeah. his or her work costume to the other students. Truck drivers need to like to then the travel. student and trainer okay, go so through each of that student's see? selected if employment cards. Made about a job, match the job he chose here. You want to see if it's a All of the students are asked if the employment cards that the student Do marked with a plus sign reflect the type of work for which the student has dressed. Can they? This provides a real awareness of how important it is for students to understand their own likes and dislikes when selecting a career. Who do we have here? The all-knowing. The all-knowing knows everything. He knows everything about you. Everything. Students learn that it is not in their own best interest to have another person choose their future career. A student dressed in a costume as the all-knowing calls up each student and hands them a folder that lists the specific job, the education required, and the wages that could be expected. You are going to be a librarian! Do you like books? The folders are in random order, so each student receives a folder that probably will not be something they would like to do. In your mind, think about the job that the all-knowing gave you, your job in front of you. Is that a, a job that you're going to want to do for the rest of your life? What I need you to do, I need you to stand up only if this is the job you want to do for the rest of your life. After each student has a folder, the trainer asks all the students to stand who are pleased okay. with the job that's if been selected for them. Rarely do. does anyone you stand. When the trainer requests that those students stand who are not happy with their job, usually they all stand, and the point is made. It is important to remember that your students with disabilities really do have the answers they need, but they may not know that they do. 
When they are provided with a safe environment and the opportunity to discover themselves, students can better understand what it takes to change from school to adult worker. The IEP song activity encourages conversation about the importance of the students participating in their own IEP meetings. School staff members dress up in costumes to become members of a musical group. The lyrics of their song encourage conversation about the importance of students becoming involved in the IEP process and participating in their own IEP meetings. The students then join in singing and acting out the IEP song. The mock IEP activity has begun with school staff members playing such roles as principal, mom, dad, special education teacher, or regular education teacher in a mock IEP meeting. Students are encouraged to speak up when they hear one of the actors say something they know to be wrong or not in their best interest. The student speaking up replaces the actor whose words were questioned. By the end of the activity, all the actors are the students themselves. Students realize they really do have a voice that is important to be heard. Students become aware of the importance of working with a team so they can participate as an equal member in the decisions that are being made for them at their own IEP meetings. No one knows her like she knows her. The second day, students enter the room more relaxed and eager to begin the activities since they're familiar with the people and the place and they know they're going to have a good time while they're learning. We're going to talk about a story concerning IDEA, the law, IDEA, Individuals Disabilities Education Act. And in this story, we have a judge, our disco judge. The goal of the Disco Judge activity is to demonstrate that because of the passage of IDEA, students with disabilities have the protection of law to support the education and services they need to transition from school to life. A student dressed as a judge presides over the group as the It's My Turn trainer relates how the legal system was unable to rule regarding the educational rights of students with disabilities because there had been no real protection under the law. The judge told Jeremy to state his case. I am 14 years old. What does the law say for me? This was the moment the people had been waiting for. Could the judge make a decision? Could the judge give a ruling? IDEA provided for very specific activities related to transitions such as courses of study, employment, living, community participation, and rights of transfer at age 18. Because IDEA provided students with disabilities protection under the law is really something to be celebrated. The culmination of the activity is a victory dance around the room with the judge. To help the students absorb what they have learned about the law and transition, students are asked to decorate a painter's hat to demonstrate what they've learned. Students who design the three hats determined best to reflect the information are awarded prizes. Such as where you're going to live and what you're going to have in your house. The things for living. So the first one is in the city. 
Students move on to work with the decisions they must make about their life choices from the living cards that they receive. They follow the same procedure as they did after the Superman Clark Kent activity by putting a plus, minus, or question mark sign on each of their cards. The students quickly understand how to participate in this activity based on the first day's experience. What, what kind of fun entertainment would you like to do? What my entertainment is? Mm -hmm. Should have won played PlayStation 2. And oh, that's, my that's your. He wants to play PlayStation 2 games. Does it cost money to buy those games in that system? Yes. And, yes. All right, so money. Oh, yeah. This is called the froggy game. <laughs> and we need everybody to be in their seats so that we know where to go when Sean has to pay a bill. Sean, Sean, we found out that you have, Sean has a job, you guys. Do you know how much money he makes in his job? Once all the students have gone through their living cards, the froggy game follows where once again all of the students are involved. One student has a pocket apron with his or her income for the month in large bills. We're going to travel six. Let's travel six. As the student walks around the froggy game, as directed by a student throwing a die, Chance determines if he or she will land on a gotta have it card, one of the life choices the student would like to have, or an oh no card, an unexpected expense, or an oh yeah card, a gift or saving of money. He bought his furniture. How much will that cost? $100. Okay. Let's see. You chose the no-name brand and it only cost you... The trainer leads a discussion of each expense as the student makes his or her way around the game. The importance of a work ethic and needed job skills are part of the discussion. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45...